Pratima from Planet Physiology. Today we shall learn about pupillary reflexes which include light reflex and accommodation reflex. Light reflex will be dealt under the following headings. Definition, Types of light reflex, Pathway for light reflex and clinical aspects associated with light reflex. To study accommodation reflex, first we shall study the concept of accommodation, then definition, changes taking place in the eye during accommodation, its pathway and clinical aspects. Let us begin with light reflex. It is defined as brisk constriction of pupil in response to light. It is of two types, direct and indirect. In direct light reflex, pupillary constriction is observed in the same eye to which the light is shown. That is, if the light is shown to the right eye, right pupil will constrict. Indirect light reflex is also called as consensual light reflex. In this type, pupillary constriction is observed in opposite eye. That is, if the light is shown in the right eye, the pupillary constriction is observed in left eye. This is the reflex to examine functioning of optic nerve, oculomotor nerve and midbrain. And to learn how to elicit it, you can watch my video on clinical examination of second cranial nerve. The link is provided in the description box below. Now let us study the pathway for light reflex. First understand the diagram. These are the eyeballs giving rise to optic nerve, then optic chiasma, then optic tract. Lateral geniculate body is not shown in this diagram because impulses for light reflex do not go to lateral geniculate body. Now this is the cross section of midbrain showing pretectal nucleus and Edinger vespal nucleus. These two blue circles represent ciliary ganglia. Now when light is shown to the eye, signals are generated by the retina. These signals travel in the optic nerve, then optic chiasma and optic tract. The fibrous carrying signals for light reflex leave the optic tract and synapse in the pretectal nucleus of midbrain. Fibers arising from pretectal nucleus relay these signals to ipsilateral as well as contralateral Edinger vespal nucleus. From Edinger vespal nucleus, impulses travel in oculomotor nerve which terminate in ciliary ganglion and from here short ciliary nerve transmits the signal to the ciliary muscle causing them to contract. As a result, pupil constricts. Signals from other Edinger vespal nucleus are transmitted to the other eye to cause pupillary constriction of opposite eye causing consensual light reflex. Thus, when the light is shown in one eye, there is bilateral pupillary constriction. Let us revise this pathway for light reflex with the help of flow chart. So, light signals travel in optic nerve, in optic chiasma, optic tract, then to pretectal nucleus in the midbrain. From pretectal nucleus, impulses are given to both ipsilateral as well as contralateral Edinger vespal nucleus. From Edinger vespal nucleus, oculomotor nerve carries signals to ciliary ganglion and from there, short ciliary nerve to ciliary muscles causing constriction of pupil. Light reflex allows the eye to adjust the amount of light reaching the retina and to protect photoreceptors from bright light. Clinically, it is elicited to assess brainstem function. Light reflex will be abnormal where it can be totally absent or it will be delayed or its intensity will be less. And it can happen in damage of optic nerve or oculomotor nerve or in case of brainstem lesions like tumor of midbrain or in case of neurosyphilis. It is also abnormal in case of barbiturate poisoning. Let us see an interesting situation where light reflex is absent but accommodation reflex is present. This condition is called as Argil Robertson pupil. In this condition, pupillary constriction is present in response to accommodation but not in response to light. And you can remember the condition and what happens in this condition by its initial. The condition is ARP that is 
Arjil Robertson Pupil and same ARP you can remember as accommodation reflex present. So in this condition accommodation reflex is present but light reflex is absent. Now presence of accommodation reflex or presence of pupillary constriction in response to accommodation reflex indicates that afferent as well as efferent pathways for pupillary reaction is normal. Hence there is damage to the pretectal nucleus and this is observed in case of neurosyphilis. Now coming to the second pupillary reflex, accommodation reflex. First let us understand the concept of accommodation. This picture shows eyeball with relaxed ciliary muscle and hence the lens is flat. Normally when eyes are relaxed, the parallel light rays are focused exactly on the retina and we can see clear image of that object. Light rays will be parallel if the object is at 6 meters or beyond from the eyes. So as indicated here with the black line, this is the 6 meters distance from eye and if the object is beyond that, all the rays will be parallel to the eye. Now if the object is at less than 6 meters distance from the eyes, the rays arising from it will be diverging and the relaxed eye will focus these diverging rays behind the retina as indicated in this picture. As a result, image of that object which is formed on the retina will be blurred or diffuse. To form a clear image of nearer object, either the distance between lens and the retina should increase, similar to the lens adjustment of the camera, so that the rays are focused exactly on the retina or the lens should become more convex to increase its refractive power. Like we change the lens of the camera to focus the nearer object. Mammals have adopted this second mechanism where lens changes its refractive power as per the need. This increase in the convexity of the lens is achieved mainly by increasing the anterior curvature of the lens and the process by which it is achieved is called as accommodation. During adjustment of the eye for near vision, eye shows accommodation, pupillary constriction as well as convergence of the eyeball and this three part response is called as near response. Let us study this near response in detail. So first change is increase in anterior curvature of the lens. The basic purpose of this is to increase the refractive power of the lens. So that diverging rays will be exactly focused on the retina. This change in the curvature of the lens can be studied by using phacoscope. Second change that occurs during accommodation or during near vision is constriction of pupil. Constriction of pupil helps to reduce the amount of light entering the eyes and also to focus the object in the fovea region. This improves the clarity as well as depth of the vision. The third change is convergence of the eyeball. Because of convergence, image is formed on the corresponding points on the retina and that also helps in clear vision. Now let us study how these changes are brought out that is the pathway for accommodation. So as we have seen earlier, rays from nearer objects are divergent and hence form blur image on the retina. This is the cue or signal that travels along the optic pathway to the primary visual cortex that is the usual optic pathway is employed. Optic nerve, optic chysma, then optic tract, lateral geniculate body and then to primary visual cortex or area 17. From primary visual cortex then impulses are sent to frontal eye field area that is Grodman's area 8. Signals from area 8 are transmitted now to Edinger Westphal nucleus in the midbrain and then to the ciliary ganglion via oculomotor nerve and then to ciliary muscles through the short ciliary nerve causing them to contract. Contraction of ciliary muscles moves ciliary body forwards and inwards towards the optic axis. This decreases the tension on the zonular ligaments and lens assumes more convex shape. This increases the refractive power of the lens and causes more bending of this divergent rays and clear focusing of the object exactly on the retina. 
Contraction of sphincter pupillary muscles by oculomotor nerve causes pupillary constriction and simultaneous contraction of both medial recti leads to convergence of the eyeball and all these changes ultimately help in clear visualization of near object. This picture depicts the changes in the eye. This is the relaxed eye with flat lens. In lower panel you can see the diameter of the pupil. Now this is the accommodated eye showing increase in the anterior curvature of the lens and pupillary constriction. Now the question arises how much the lens can accommodate? When eyes are relaxed refractive power of the lens is 20 diopters. But to see very nearby objects refractive power of the lens can increase up to 34 diopters. This difference between refractive power of the lens during complete relaxation and maximum accommodation is called as amplitude of accommodation. The value of this amplitude of accommodation is 12 to 14 diopters. Now these values are different in different books. For example, Ganong mentions it as 12 diopters whereas Guyton says it is 14 diopters. A normal eye can clearly visualize all the objects beyond 6 meters distance and hence the far point that is the farthest point from the eye at which objects can be clearly seen is infinite. In contrast lens has definite near point due to its limited capacity to increase its refractive power. The nearest point to the eye at which objects can be clearly seen is called as near point and it requires maximum accommodation of the eye. Difference between far point and near point is called as range of accommodation. Near point recedes with age. As this table shows, at the age of 10 years, near point is about 9 centimeters away from the eyeball. Now again this value differs from book to book. Some research paper says it is 7 cm but Ganong says it is 9 cm. This gradually increases as age advances and at the age of 40 years the near point is about 25 cm away from the eyeball. Shift of near point farther and farther from the eyeball is very rapid after the age of 40. Why this near point recedes with age? Because with aging there is loss of elasticity of the lens and hence there is decreased power of accommodation of the lens. This decrease in accommodation with aging is termed as presbyopia and it is corrected by using either biconvex lens which are also called as reading glasses because people often use them just only while doing the close work like reading or it can be corrected by using bifocal lens. As you can see in this picture this is the bifocal lens where the lower part is used while reading and the upper part of the lens is used for viewing the distant objects. So here we finish with the pupillary reflexes. So let us quickly revise the important points of today's session. Constriction of pupil in response to light is called as light reflex and it is of two types direct and consensual. It prevents entry of excessive light in the eyes and thereby protect photoreceptors. Afferent for light reflex is optic nerve whereas efferent is oculomotor nerve. Center lies in midbrain. Light reflex is lost in Argyll Robertson pupil, lesions in midbrain or damage to its afferent or efferent pathway. Increase in anterior curvature of the lens to visualize near object is called as accommodation reflex and its purpose is to maintain clarity of the vision as object approaches near the eye. Afferent for this reflex is optic nerve and efferent is oculomotor nerve. During near response three changes are taking place. You can remember three C's increase in the anterior curvature of the lens, constriction of pupil and convergence of the eyeball. So first C is curvature of the lens, second is constriction and third is convergence. Difference between maximum and minimum refractive power of the lens is called as amplitude of accommodation and it is maximum in children which is 14 diopters whereas difference between far point and near point is called as range of accommodation. Near point recedes with age and it is called as presbyopia and it is corrected by using bifocal or biconvex lens. 
that's all for this session thank you if you enjoy my sessions press the like button and share it with your friends if you haven't yet subscribed my channel press the subscribe button to get notifications about new releases press bell icon thank you for watching and see you in the next video